So I would say with your personal finance, familiarity breeds competence. Have you heard the phrase familiarity breeds content? It means that when you become too familiar, when you interact with a thing too much, you kind of lose respect for it. But hey, when it comes to your personal finance, familiarity doesn't bring content. The more you get familiar with your finances, the more you get familiar with it, with your money, the better you become at managing it. So I would say with your personal finance, familiarity breeds competence. Now, a lot of people complain about their financial life. They tell you, I don't know where my money is going. I don't know what is happening with my money. You need to become familiar. You need to interact with your figures more so that you can understand how to manage it. I read this quote by Francis Bacon, and he says that money is an excellent servant, but a bad leader, right? Money is an excellent servant. When you give direction to your money, when you provide guidance and oversight for your money, it goes to the right places. So back to that phrase, you need to get more familiar with your finances. You need to interact with your finances. So I tell people, money is inanimate. You are animate. Money cannot be wiser or stronger or smarter than you. You've got to be smarter than your money. Now, when we talk about getting more familiar with your finances, what are some of those areas you need to look into? The first thing I would like to say is know your money values. Why would you like to have more money? Why would you like to be wealthy? What do you want money to do for you? You see, some people want money to give them security. Some people want money to give them comfort. Some people just want money to give them freedom to do anything they want to do. So you need to know your values, right? Understand what you want money to do for you. Understand what money represents in your life. Money is a tool. Money is a resource to live an amazing life. Number two, you need to know your money scripts. Now, money scripts are our core beliefs about money. They are things that we have grown up with. They are things that we have picked up from our parents, from our peers, from our environment, in school, from our experiences, and even from influencers. Those are the scripts running in our mind. When you think, oh, I do not have money, I'm always broke, oh, I am poor. That's a script running in your mind. When you think of abundance, oh, I may not have the physical cash that I need, but hey, I will get it. Money is a tool, money is a resource. That's another script. So you either have poverty scripts running in your mind about money or abundance script. So you need to take a step back. For example, when I was growing up, my parents provided everything that we needed, but there were always complaints. Um, one doesn't grow on trees, this and that and all of that. But you see, some of those things stayed with me as an example. Um, I didn't see anybody saving around me. I didn't see anybody telling me the importance of saving money. So when I grew up, I mean, I just was running with those scripts that I had, you know, sort of taken from my parents. So you need to just have an idea of what is going on in your mind. I've said your values and I'm saying, what are your core beliefs about money? Some people see money as evil. They call them the money monks. They say they, they think that money is something that is so sacred that you know you don't even need to amass or you don't need to accumulate. So know your money scripts. Number three, know your money patterns and your money triggers. For example, when you hold more cash in your hand or in your pocket or your wallet, are you likely to send spend more? Now, when you hang around with some people, are you likely to spend more? When you go to some places, are you likely to spend more? Sit down interact with your bank statement i'm going to go into that just so but know your triggers what makes you spend excessively what are those things that you know just trigger you and just send you uh, you know on this journey of just spending and spending and spending impulsively so again in interacting with your money and getting familiar with your money i said know your money values know your money scripts and of course identify your money triggers and your money patterns. As I wrap up this conversation, practically, how do you get more familiar with your finances? The first thing, interact with your bank statements. When I coach people one-on-one -on -one and they tell me, oh coach, 
I have this money issues. I tell them, give me your bank statement for one year. Because your bank statement reveals you and your relationship with your money. You know, all of those impulsive purchases, all of those short codes, all of those expenses that show up all the time on your bank statement, you know, frequently, it just says a lot about you. So take a look at your bank statement for the last one year. For some people, it will amaze you the amount of money that has gone through your bank statement. And then for some people, it will just show you, you know, the leakages, the leakages, where your money has been going to. All right, number two, have a budget. Sit down. A lot of people plan their money after they have spent it. I used to be like that. I would write down my expenses after I've spent my salary. But a budget is you telling your money where to go even before it starts to go so that your money doesn't become your leader. Interact with your budget, right? Have a plan. This is what is coming in. This is what is going to go out. This is my excess. This is my deficit. This is going to go into a savings account. Do not let money conversations scare you. I already said, money is inanimate, you are animate. The third thing, have an accountability partner. Have somebody you can share your money concerns with. Hey, it won't hurt. Yeah, get a trusted person, trusted people. Be a part of a mastermind where you can tell people, share your concerns. Again, trusted people. Let them know your weaknesses, let them know your strengths, and of course, get to talk with one another. I hope with these few points, you realize that, hey, you can get familiar with your money and there's no content. When you get familiar with your money, you breed competence. See you some other time.